Hey guys, welcome back. It's been a little while today, but as you can see behind me here, uh, me and Midnight, she won't leave me alone now. Uh, we're working on my tractor today. I've been restoring this tractor, so I'm trying to get it looking decently nice. It is still going to be a farm tractor. Let me grab this light a second. So you guys can see. But today we're working up underneath the dash. One wiring. And if you know me, you know how much I hate wiring. Uh, everybody nowadays wants to go to electronic stuff, all that. Well, let them work on it for a little bit. I'll tell you how much they love it. But, uh... What we're doing today is we're working on wiring, and I used to really hate wiring. Now this light ain't shutting off. There it goes. That light wasn't shutting off. Uh, I used to really hate wiring because I didn't understand it. Well, first off, let's look. What all here on your dash needs wired? Got your gauges, your light switch, the fuse. I may not even use this fuse. Uh, push button, choke, key, and cigarette lighter. What all needs power? Well, your fuse, that's what power runs through. And that's to jump the whole system if something shorts out. So you don't burn up your wiring. So that's very handy, but I may not use this. And I'll tell you guys why in a second. Then, you've got your push button. Your, uh, that does use power. Of course it uses power. Choke, no power, that's mechanical. Key uses power, and, well, it turns on power, I'll put it that way. And your lighter, of course, uses power. But, let's talk gauges now. These two gauges, your water gauge and the oil pressure gauge on this tractor here, they're mechanical. But, of course, your amp gauge, that's your voltage, so, of course, it has power running to it. And then you got your fuel gauge. Well, uh, what I'm doing today is, well, I guess I've said that. Now I'm jumping on myself. So, we're going to figure out how to wire this. And I have the wiring diagram for this tractor right here. Right there is the easiest one to go by that I've been looking at, but this is garbage. Because... We get real close if they'll focus. Of course, it ain't going to focus. Well, that's positive ground. Positive ground is confusing in my head. So, if you look here, I don't have my battery hooked up yet. But, my jumper cables, the hot side's on the positive. Well, I changed it to negative ground, which is very simple. Uh, the only thing that gets changed is everything gets switched over. You switch your distributor. So, let me check to make sure I'm getting this right. I don't want to give you guys false information. So, yeah, your positive side runs to your key. But your negative, that runs to your distributor. And then... Of course, all this stuff is grounded, self-grounding. So, you don't got to worry about grounding it. And, I'm not really messing with this here. So, I don't care about that box. <laughs> really. I mean, wire it in if you want. I might have to look in how to do that. And you change your alternator. So... But, first thing we gotta work on is to get the engine started and to where it will be running. So, I mean, we got this here. That's just really confusing. All, all these are confusing. And one thing about wiring is, the wiring same for a gas, diesel, any tractor, pretty much. So... The only thing that's added on with gas tractors is your distributor 
all that stuff. But other than that, they're, they're the exact same. You might have a few things added on for newer tractors. But this is all we need to know is your starting circuit. So the thing you want to start with is and them little three lines there, that means that everything's grounded. So we want to see here. Let me set this down so I can point. So, you can see, go from the top thing on your starter, which is, and you guys can't see, that post right there, the top one, the wire running off it to the key. And then you want to test your key with a test light to see which side is which. So that whenever your key's on, you got power running through it. But when the key's off, you only have power to one side. But of course, your battery has to be hooked up for that. Then, the side that whenever the key's on, it puts power. Take that to your push button. And then, from your push button, down to the other side of the starter. And then, the only thing that needs to be grounded here is your starter and your battery. You can see here... Your battery hooks up to the same spot as the key does on your starter. That way there's power continuously always to the key. Well, now we have it that the tractor will turn over. The starting circuit is done. But now, we see here we can take the side of the key that your push button's hooked up to, so when your key's on there's power to it, run that to the positive side on your coil, then the negative side hooks up to your distributor, and once again, both of them are grounded. And you might have to add a resistor before the coil, but my, my coils internally resisted. I think that's what they normally come as now, so we don't got to worry about that much. So that's starting down. And then you can get into wiring the gauges where you want to... Take a wire off the key to your amp gauge. And something else, too, is I've heard, I had a guy telling me that you want to wire everything to your amp gauge. That way, if something goes wrong, it just blows up your amp gauge. It sounds catastrophic, but I'd rather have to replace an amp gauge than all the wiring again. So that is very smart. But what I'm doing is I'm running... This junction block, you can buy these on Amazon, eBay, all that stuff. But you can see, I'm going to hook this into the key. See, that'll be hooked up right there to the one side of the key that has power on when you turn the key on. And then here, now with the way that we have this set up, there's power running to all these as soon as you turn the key on. Well, I can run this one to the light switch. This one to the distributor, this one to my fuel gauge, my amp gauge, and then, uh, I mean, I could put the push button coming off of here, too. What else? I think that's everything. Oh, and a cigarette lighter, all them things. So, I can do that, and then run a fuse off of all these. So, if I do that... Then, don't gotta worry about this fuse. Although I might put this fuse on as my lights, just so that this is being used. So maybe that'll be my light fuse. I don't know. Or I could run everything through this fuse here, which I still might do. I just gotta figure this out. I'm thinking inside my head. I'm I'm gonna draw. Draw down all your ideas. It makes it so much easier. And then you just put that somewhere underneath your tractor where it won't get water on it. But another thing, too, that's nice about them junction blocks is put one in here somewhere, right where your tractor splits. That way, if you ever got to split your tractor, just undo the wires and the whole thing comes apart. Although, like on this tractor, it'd be pretty easy because I only got to unhook this wire here 
from my distributor, and then I'll have my headlights. But with that being said, now let's look at your light diagram. So, and then I have it marked down so that you can run it from your key or your amp gauge. They would both have continuous power when the key's on. So, you can run either one to your light switch. Then your light switch it has markings on it to tell you which one. Like, uh, I think HL for headlights, uh, RL for rear lights, just stuff like that. And then run your light switch. We're going down here to the rear light now. There's only one. And then that gets grounded, of course. Everything gets grounded, pretty much. And then run to your front lights. With this being positive ground, it's, I mean, negative ground, it's nice so it's easy in your head. And that, that's just how simple it is. Makes it pretty simple whenever you take out all the doodads and all that. But like now... I had my tractor to where it was, it would have started. Well, I shouldn't say it would have started. It turned over. It wouldn't start right now because it don't have fuel going to it. So, yeah, it never start like that. But, I just made wiring look simple. And then you, you want to wire in that voltage regulator there. You can go through all that junk. I may not even screw with it, to be honest. I'm going to talk to my buddy and see what that does. But Well, let's look at a few things. Okay, let's look at lights. We can see these lights here. It's a three-wire light. Positive, your ground, and then you got... Uh, that extra light bulb that I'm not even gonna fool with. So I'm gonna I gotta test them to see which one's which which to run the wires to. And then these are the lights off big red, but they'll be on the front and rear of my tractor. So oh and another gauge. Just looking at the tax mechanical too. It just has the shaft running out the back, so that's nice. So that's simple. And then I'm using 14 gauge wire. You can use 12 gauge. 12 gauge was the original. But you're going to need lots of connectors. I started out soldering every single connection, but that was going to be a bit much. And I can't figure out how to solder halfway. So I was just putting the connectors on. I tear off these little rubber grommets and then I put them on, smash them down. And I put shrink tubing over them. Looks super nice. Here's one of them connections. And then, that's a good connection. That should last a long time. Well then too, to also make it easy, you look at wiring, red and black. Well, red should be your positive. Black is your ground. So, all red wires are have juice going to them. So, they're on. Black wires are ground wires. Very easy to remember. Gonna make it easier to work on. And look at my wiring. This wiring here is just about done. And of course you guys can't see. Very simple wiring right there. Compared to this rat's nest. Like all, I mean, Somebody fiddled with this wiring beforehand. A little bit, but, but this is just a bunch of garbage. That, that's junk. Start new, start fresh. But it just makes it so much simpler. And then, most of this stuff here is self-grounding, which is garbage. I don't like that, because there's paint, of course. Like my cigarette lighter, the old one was self-grounding. This one's not. I like that. I don't want it to be self-grounding. But, like my gauges, they're self-grounding. The ones that need power going to them and stuff. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run to the 
these screws right here that hold the gauge in. I'm running a wire across all of them so that they're no longer self-grounding. I mean, that they'll still be self-grounding, but as a fail-safe, I'll have ground wire running somewhere. So that will work nice. So it, it just, I want it to where I don't want to got to work on it again. All right. That's the easiest way to put it. I guess I could s see if this thing. I think that this battery's dead because I'm not getting a whole lot of juice. Put this on the starter nut. Now there should be power. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have any juice. Oh, there it goes. See? Shut the key off, no power. Nothing. Cigarette lighter ain't even hooked up yet, so... I don't gotta screw with that, but... See, pretty simple. And I guess I could show you guys how to test this stuff. So, just take this little rod end off. Got a test light. Bought this one. I think this one came from Harbor Freight. So. We know this won't ever break. But, let me set you guys down a minute. What I'm going to do, I do this. It has this little clamp on the end. Well, that seems to always fall off of things. So I just hook that into the ground clamp. Then, I'll have continuous power. Hopefully, that, that's the plan. See, I got power now. See, we can look here. No power to the back side of any of these switches but the key switch. Key switch has continuous power to it right now. Well, we go to the other side of the key switch. That's how you can tell which way your key switch is. Well, now, I turn my key switch on. I should have power to the other side. We can see both sides have power. Now let's go right there to the uh, push button now. That has power running to it now. But we go to the other side. It don't have power yet. Until, how can I do this? I might have to put you guys in my mouth. No, that ain't gonna work. Okay, let's try this. And... That needs to be tightened. Yeah, that ain't working. I know it has power running to it because we just heard it clicking. But now we can throw all this garbage down. But that's how you test everything. Very simple. And I unhooked that for good measures. But, see, that makes it a whole lot simpler. You can tell when everything's running. And stuff. Makes wiring a whole lot simpler. And even that, that's a rat's nest. We don't want that. Now let me put the end back on this test light. But, yeah, we can see how. This is either really simple or really complicated. But, it works. So, yeah, it's nice to know that. See, a couple of days ago I was looking at this. This looked really complicated. 
I had a buddy, best mechanic you'll ever meet. He was showing me some few things. Now I'm trying to teach you guys things. But yeah, looking pretty sweet. Hopefully this tractor will start up first time. Everything should be right. I'm hoping it'll be a huge burden off my back whenever I hear this thing run. I've had it for over a year, never once heard it run. So, yeah. That'll be nice. The guy said it hasn't ran in like eight years. I got this thing over a year ago. Well, almost two years, September. So, ten years almost that this thing hasn't ran. But she's going to run. I'll put it this way. The wiring's going to work it. <laughs> I know that will work. I know the engine will work. I got confidence. If not, I have to figure out what I did wrong and fix it. Simple as that. But... Yeah, that there, that's how you do wire. Uh, you guys want to know how to do anything else, I do my best to try and explain it like I did this. But, yeah, good luck with your guys' projects. I hope mine works. You guys will see in later videos if it works. But yeah, thanks for watching guys, and... I'll see y'all in the next video. You know what, guys? I lied with what I said. Uh, where... Where is it? This junction block. I did not use this. I decided not to. Oh, these are garbage. Let me throw these away. I've been screwing around. Look at these. Do you guys like to just plug in things? Them things are garbage. They won't ever hold. And you can't fit more than one thing on unless you do what I did right here. Let me flip this down. Pull that wire out. You can see there I got all that tangled in there. how I've been working on the dash here. We can see I got it, everything wired pretty much the way that I want it. The only thing that's not wired in right now is the fuel gauge. But that's alright. Oh, and the cigarette lighter still needs grounded. But other than that, oh, and the light switch. That, well, there's quite a few things that aren't wired in, as we can see. But that's alright. I got the main stuff needed to run the tractor. I even got some more. I did end up wiring in that little black box. But, uh, I did everything. And I didn't fuse every single thing like I wanted to. I put it through one fuse down here, which is the dash fuse. So, that's all right. Oh, look at that. Huh. You can just tuck all the wires away in there. That's nice. But, uh, you can see all this is hot wires so far. That's a lot of hot wires. But see, like, look at that key switch. You can't put more than one on because it's a little push ones. I had to put three wires together. One to run the push switch, one to run the amp gauge, and then... One to run the distributor. And then, I wasn't going to run everything off the amp gauge, but now I am. I can just blow up my amp gauge and that'll be alright. But, I don't think anything will ever short out. I've been doing a little bit of wire management. Uh, I'm going to tape it all together and stuff make it look semi nice this is the only wire running up to the front of the tractor so far 
I'm gonna have to put my headlights on, but they're not ready to go on yet. Nor is my rear light. So I'm not gonna mess with that much. But and whenever I ground everything, I set about running through the back of the gauge. I'm gonna run from here to here to here, and then I'm gonna take it down and ground it somewhere. So that'll work just fine. And then, too, I was messing around. I didn't quite like my starter ground, so I took it out and uh, cleaned it up a little bit, put it back in. I think that'll hold a better ground. I've been testing everything, making sure it's getting enough power with my multimeter. So that's good. Midnight's been laying around, but I still got all this junk to put on. I gotta paint this, these white parts. Most of that stuff's junk. Yeah, all this stuff's junk. There's some parts I gotta clean up. Paint sometime. I'm not too worried about them right now. I do need to get this front this dash piece of sheet metal cleaned up and the uh and uh, oh you just want to be rubbed and what was i gonna say you, you mixed me up in there oh and the hood and this thing here what's the best way to pop dents out of these I'm recording a video. Okay, well, that interrupted me. But I gotta pop all the dents out of that and clean that up. That needs painted too. Oh, and another thing since this tractor had a front loader on it originally, I took that off, sold it already, made a few bucks. Right there is the hose. That's the pressure hose to put fluid into the loader. Well, there's supposed to be a plate right there. And since there was a front loader on it, that plate isn't there. That hose was there. Well, there's also steel hoses that connect all this stuff together. And it has the drop for all the pressure. The relief, whatever you want to call it. Can't think of the correct term. But since it had a loader, they had to put that different thing on. Normally, it's just a pipe running between that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook that hose around. Put it right into a relief and if anything it'll make my hydraulics a little bit stronger because it'll have more pressure in it i've asked a few folks about that they said it'll work so i'm excited i don't gotta buy more stuff because that would be expensive but i do gotta let air out of these rear tires too when they put the tires on, the rims for us, they put a lot of pressure in there. Put it that way. More than what we want in there. Oil in the motor. And Dad just showed me. He said, this... Hydraulic and transmission fluid, that stuff's good for in my transmission. So maybe I can fill that sometimes. I gotta find the plug though for the side of the port so that you know when it's full. And this here will probably take 80, 90 weight gear oil. Well, that's what I would expect it to take. Right there's the plug for that. And in there, but I gotta read my book on that. Unless you know what? I bet you. This might be my fill plug. Is that the only place that makes sense? I do gotta buy a drawbar for this tractor, too. That's another thing. But now I'm getting way off topic. This was video just about wiring 
But yeah, now I can run all my grounds. Everything's ready in order for the tractor to run. Except for a couple of things I just mentioned about hydraulics. And we need to put antifreeze in. But maybe I'll do that sometime. Just fill that with antifreeze. Oh, and the gas tank needs to go back one. But I'm glad that all this wiring's done. I hate wiring. Yeah. And then there, there's supposed to be an instrument light right there. That could be wired in. Where is that? See, whenever I was taking it out, Dad told me that light bulb wouldn't break. Well, I was pulling on the light bulb and it smashed all throughout my fingers. Well, right here's the wiring for it. I gotta find a light bulb for that. So, and I can put that in. Uh, and I do in my tack cable. Right here's a brand new tack cable. It says speedometer cable. Speedometer cable on that. Tie rod ends. Friction plates. Rear lugs. I bought a bunch of parts the other week. Right here's the end of my tack cable. I gotta run that through the parts washer. Oil pressure thing. But, yeah, all these diagrams are semi nice. Oh, look, that one there is even negative ground. Let's see about this one. Battery, negative ground, negative. This is the only one that's positive ground. So negative ground, I told you guys how to do, switch it. But yeah. She's coming together. That's nice. I do got to get a new battery. Because... I don't know if you guys can tell, that one's just a bit big. But I'm thinking about building a new battery box instead of it had a bungee cord on it. Well, that's going to fall off and tear some stuff apart. So I'm thinking about building an actual battery box for it. And then, too, I got to buy an alternator. I had that alternator on right there, but it's locked up completely. Look at all these extra parts I have now. Have lights, pistons, oil filters, filters everywhere. All kinds of gauges. I want to clean these gauges up and like make a display. That'd be cool, I think. I got to test that coil to see if it's good. There's a good light. It just needs cleaned up. Some of this stuff's good in here. Um, center pins are good, them valve things, new bearings, but I just got a couple of bolts that I don't know exactly 100% what they go to, but I know that sounds bad, but I'm not afraid about that because so far everything's been put together, and some of these bolts, like these ones here, I added them in to hold a plate keep the pressure on it while I was taking it off. That was for the TI. So that's all right. But yeah, this video is how to take that rat's nest, which I'm gonna take all the good wires out of this and use them for other projects and turn that rat's nest into this rat's nest. Which, I mean, I prefer this rat's nest a whole lot more. Because I did this and I think it's right. Although, all these connections, I got to tighten them up. Like, them, them are loose. Got ground stuff. And then we're done, guys. Everything's going to be done just about. 
all that's going to be left is just filling stuff. A little bit more paint work for the sheet metals. I, I ordered a seat back in May, March, May, something like that. They never sent it. Then they said that uh, we needed to show proof that we paid for it. Well, I paid the 400 bucks. But mom said they reimbursed us or whatever. So I got to reorder that. So that's nice. Then to these bolts here. I got to put thread locker on them. I added these bolts in because the thing broke. Underneath which is fine and bolts are gonna stop it from leaking I hope if not I'll have to braze it here's already a ground cable done up maybe that can be my ground cable running down somewhere I wasn't a I was looking thinking about grounding right to here I think that would be a good ground or my starter ground I know that's definitely a good ground but yeah guys uh, I gotta quit blabbing now or else this video is gonna be an hour and 38 minutes long so uh, thank you all for watching I hope you can effectively wire your tractor now and I hope these little diagrams I drew help you guys it definitely helped me they seem a whole lot easier now wiring's a whole lot easier than it looks you just got you got to be able to read it and know what you're doing and make sure make sure that you have no power running anything when you're working on it it turns out bad don't ask me how I know but thanks for watching guys and I'll see y'all in the next video.